Hi there. With this video, we are starting a new series on the term structure of interest rates. So let's begin with explaining what is meant by the term structure. It is essentially the yield curve you see over here. So it tells us how bond yields change with the years to maturity. Here we've got a hump-shaped uh, yield curve, but sometimes you will get a flat one. Sometimes we would get an upward sloping one or a downward sloping one. So how, how can we explain these different shapes of yield curves? What's the economics behind that, right? And there are a couple of theories put forward to explain uh, the term structure of interest rates, and we will be covering them in, in this video series. So we'll be beginning with the expectation hypothesis, which will be the focus of this video, and in the upcoming videos, we'll be talking about liquidity preference theory and segmented market hypothesis. Okay, let's get started with the expectations hypothesis. First, we need some definitions. So we will define three separate terms. One is called the spot rate, one is called the short rate, and finally the forward rate. Okay, and you can see each of them in this figure. So we have two bonds, bond A and bond B. The yield to maturities on these bonds are called spot rates. So this is a one year bond, let's say a zero coupon bond. So the spot rate, which we know today, is 7%. Right? So this is a 7%, so this is a spot rate for a one year maturity. Whereas bond B matures in two years. Let's say again it's a zero coupon bond, and let's assume these bonds are risk free. And the spot rate for this bond is 5% per year, which means that each year this uh, uh, we expect this bond uh, to yield a 5% if we hold it until its maturity, right? So then, uh, if you think about the yield curve we've seen in the previous slide, so we will have 7% for the first year, and then 5% uh, for the second year of maturity. What we don't know at the moment is what will be the yield on a new bond that will be issued next year. So let's say this is bond A prime, and let's say this is going to be issued in one year's time, and will mature in year two. So that will also have, of course, its yield to maturity, but we don't know that. So that's the short rate, one year short rate that will prevail next year. But what we can calculate is the forward rate for the same period. And the forward rate may or may not be equal to the short rate, as we will see when we start discussing the theories behind the term structure. So first of all, how can we obtain this forward rate of 3.04%. It's very easy. So think of it as two investment opportunities. One investment opportunity is to hold bond B for two years. So if I do that, each year I will earn 5% return. So my investment will grow to 105 to the power 2. So forward rate is basically found by setting this equal to an alternative investment opportunity where I first invest in bond A for one year. So my return will be 107 for the first year times 1 plus the forward rate in the second year. Okay. So then to solve for F, I've got 1 plus F equals 105 to the power 2, so this is the first term over here, divided by 107. So if I solve for f, this is how I obtain 3.04%. Okay, so basically, forward rate or forward rates are the rates, the future interest rates that are implied by the spot rates. Okay. But how do we know this should be 3% and, you know, not 4%, 5%? How does the market determine these 
plates, right? So that's what we are, want to understand. Um, and that's why we need some theories. So the first theory we will focus on is the expectations hypothesis. So it asks the question about how the forward rates are determined in markets and what do they really reflect? So again, we will focus on a case with two bonds. Again, a, a one-year bond, which has a spot rate of 9%. So this is the one-year spot rate. And bond B, which matures in two years, this has a spot rate of 10%. Again, I can find the implied forward rate. So I can either invest in bond A for one year, which would bring me 109 times 1 plus F. So this is a new bond which I will invest in future for one year. And I will set this equal to invest in, in bond B, the alternative opportunity, for two years. And if you solve for this uh, forward rate, you'll find that the implied forward rate here uh, from these spot rates is about 11% approximately. Okay. So again, we are asking the question, what determines this 11%? Is this, for example, what we expect the short rate going to be this year? Is it higher than that or lower than that? And to answer this question, we need to think about the different types of investors in bond markets. So some investors might have a short investment horizon, for example, one year. So let's say we have a short term investor with one year investment horizon. So this investor if he invests in bond A, he knows that for certain he will get a return of 9%. Whereas if he invests in bond B, because the bond still doesn't mature in year one, there is some uncertainty uh, regarding the rate he will earn uh, in, 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 at that point. And that will depend on the price of the bond in one year's time. So let's say he purchased it for I don't know, $100. If he sells it for 110 yes, it will be a 10% return, but maybe the bond price will be a, a, a bit higher or a bit lower. If higher, that's great, but if lower, then essentially this person would lose out compared to bond A. So then for the short-term investor to consider bond B, it needs to offer something more, right? It needs to be a bit more attractive because of that price uncertainty. So that would mean that for the short-term investor, this forward rate should be higher than the expected short rate, which is R2, that will be realized over the second year. So if that's the case, bond B will be attractive enough for short-term investor to consider it against bond A. Okay. But now let's um, consider the opposite scenario. Let's think about a long-term investor who has an investment horizon of two years. So which bond is now safer, right? Bond B is safe in the sense that the long-term investor knows he, he will get exactly 10% per year in terms of yield to maturity if he buys the bond today and holds it until the maturity. So this is a zero coupon bond, so he will realize a yield to maturity of 10%. The alternative would be for the long-term investment to buy bond A, sell it, or, you know, well, it will mature in year one, so he will get the principal back, and then he would invest whatever he has at that point in a new bond. And again, there is some uncertainty because we don't know the short rate that will prevail at that point, right? We know the implied forward rate, but we don't know what the actual short rate will be. So now, we have the opposite scenario. For the long-term investor, bond A has to be more attractive than bond B because that's the one now that gives uncertainty. So then long-term investor will want actually the opposite. So he will want the forward rate to be less than the expected short rate in one year's time. For So the one that will be valid for uh, year two. So how does the market balance these opposing interests, right? So uh, one type of investor wants a forward rate higher than the expected short rate, whereas the other type of investor wants uh, a forward rate that is 
less than the expected short rate over the same period. Here is where expectations theory kicks in. So the theory argues that when, well, if, you know, there are both types of investors in the market, we will argue, or the theory will argue that the forward rates will exactly reflect the short rates, right? Because there are both types of investors in the market, so it can't be that uh, the market will be dominated by one type of investor, and it will balance out that the forward, forward rates will be actually reflections of expected future short rates, okay? And then we can interpret, use this theory to interpret different shapes of yield curves, okay? So for example, let's say we observe a, an upward slope in yield curve. So let's say we observe a yield curve, something like this. So, so we have years to maturity here, let's say just T, and we have the yields, and they are increasing over time. So if we observe this upward sloping curve, it means that our expectations of future short rates is that they are, they are going to be increasing. Okay, so an upward sloping yield curve reflect, reflects increase in short rates according to expectations hypothesis. Whereas conversely, if we observe a downward sloping yield curve, this means that the market is expecting that the short rates will be going down in subsequent years in the future. Okay. All right. So this is all I want to uh, tell, uh, tell about expectations hypothesis. In the next video, we'll be moving on to liquidity preference theory. Bye for now.